Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing some coping with an angle grinder. And you see that guy over there? That's what I wish I was doing. I'm going to be doing that very soon. But anyways, I'm going to be coping with an angle grinder. I think I've been doing this now for about a year. Actually, I made a video when I first, some of you guys first started mentioning it and did like a little experiment. I really enjoyed it and I've actually almost been exclusively using the angle grinder. Let me check that video when I posted it. Yeah, here it is. Coping trim with an angle grinder. First try, February 25th, 2018. So about a year ago, I tried to do this. This is my first try and it worked out really great. The only thing I did different was I put a flap disc on it. And this angle grinder honestly is probably overkill for this especially with this huge battery that's just what i got charged right now so i'm going to show you guys using this on a job site today so here's a little scenario i got got this crown here and there and then i gotta wrap it this way i'm gonna cope this piece here on the right and this piece here on the left at the top of this that will all be covered all that really matters is you're tied at the bottom because once that cope hugs over you're good and then that one is pretty tight all the way up against the wall if you've been watching this channel for a, any amount of time i think you've probably seen me use this but this will just hug that bull nose corner and i can mark up against these two templates right here then that gives me my pencil line for the measurements that's exactly where i need to make my pieces fall to make this really perfect because that's where this just starts to round over. This is the Starrett miter saw protractor to find the miters. Every time I talk about this, I like to mention this does not find angles. It's not an angle finder. It finds the miters, which is really what you're after in this kind of work. So this is, wow, that's pretty good on right on 45. So we'll go with 22.5 for all four of our miters. I'm going to measure for this, but measure it long and then bring it in and then just mark a pencil line on this pencil line. So we got 27 right there. I'm just gonna do, just make it an inch longer, 28. We're gonna make that piece one inch longer so we can kind of finesse it and make sure that it's gonna fit if it's good. Then we can glue up our bull nose piece to it and just install it. So we'll go ahead and get these oversized pieces cut. So I use the crown stops to cut the crown nested and I'm just going to put a 45 on this piece right here. So this whole section here is going to be cut out, but again, this is just a 45 miter on an inside corner and I'm going to take all this material out so it can sit flush. Now what I'm using is a flap disc on this grinder and this was recommended by people who saw that last video where I was using like a small thin disc. This is good for this crown. If you had like a more detailed crown uh, this probably wouldn't be so good because how thick it is right here and essentially what a flap disc is is a bunch of like 40 grit sandpaper just layered over each other like in I guess flaps <laughs> I guess that's where they get the name but those are like pieces of sandpaper glued down and it this is an old one and I've been using it for a while and it still actually hogs out a lot of that material really quickly So I'll go ahead and stop there. So what I can do with this is just use the, the shape of the disc to kind of get it at different angles. And this crown is 
really simple to do this with so I recommend this kind of colonial stuff just practicing with this because you can contour and get this thing in any direction. Right there you can see I'm kind of like just rolling it. Roll, you really just want to ease up to that white line. And I know it looks like I'm not doing a whole lot there, but I'm actually making a pretty severe back cut in this piece. And that's kind of what, what I found that I need to get it to be a tight corner. Now most of this, I'm just stopping and talking about what's coming to my mind while I'm doing this. So, but most of this is just a steady hand is really what it is. So if you're trying this out and you keep passing over the white line, it's, it's okay because this is pretty difficult. It's not, it's not hard, but it's just like a practice thing. And I'll, I'll say again, I'm pretty much coming in the back and rolling up to it. So I kind of start like a little flat and then roll up to it. Cause it doesn't really matter necessarily how much you take out from this back here, as long as you don't pop through the front. But what really does matter is this, what I call the finish line where the primer and the exposed material meet, in this case MDF, that needs to be pretty tight. <laughs> it's so windy that my hand is like blowing in the wind. All right, that's, that's pretty decent actually. So I don't know if you can really see on camera the difference because I'm looking through a small screen right now. One of the reasons I kind of stayed away from coping these MDF crowns and just mitered them for a long time was this gets so brittle. And let's say I'm carrying this piece in and I like tap it against, I don't know, a tool or something, the, the miter saw when I'm walking in with it. This stuff right here is so delicate that it can snap off. We're good. We're in business with that one. So the next thing I got to do is mark off over here, the pencil line, and then cut this. And next time you see me, I'll be gluing this whole corner up and installing it. Have you ever seen this CA glue? What kind of glue? It's called CA, cyan acrylate. Mm -mm. You just, yeah, it's pretty much instant. Let's see if I can get something to come out. And then this is the activator. Oh, okay. You gotta kind of shake it up good though. Yeah, it is similar, like it has two parts. Yeah. And then you just hold it on there for a couple of seconds. Good. 
Oh yeah. I can make somebody a sandwich. You don't get to talk anymore. <laughs> BLT. <laughs> can you ever shut it? I always thought gluing someone's wallet shut. Wallet. So when they go to buy something, they can't get the card out. Mm. <laughs> a piano would look really nice though. Yeah. So we got it all glued up and I don't think I'm going to be able to do one handed camera work in this. So yeah, I'm just going to have to go up there and show you what it looks like afterwards. Now that I got that one piece up there. So I got this piece nailed in there. And you can see that they came out good. So, and then this piece, and if I push it up in position, creates a nice tight joint there too. And we're tight all around, right on our pencil lines there. I need to shoot this thing in. I'm gonna need my other hand. All right, so here's what we end up with. Just got our inside corner over there, bull nose corner right here, and then another inside corner there. And I feel like I've done this before. Oh yeah, right over there. But that's it. That's the little process on how I wrap these corners and use that angle grinder to get these copes lined up and bull nose trim gauge stare at miter finder all that good stuff all right guys that's going to do it for this video i'm going to clean up this mess hopefully you learned something about using that angle grinder i've been using it now for a year so i have gotten comfortable with it it does take some practice and you will make some mistakes so don't get frustrated but there's many methods of coping this is just one of them my my preferred method actually and I smell some barbecue coming from across the way. Oh, right over there. I see him, he's got the smoker on. So that settles it. I'm going to Cooper's this weekend in Fort Worth, getting some brisket, some pork loin, and some, my wife likes to eat the, the ribeye. Anyways, I'm getting hungry and I'm gonna end the video now. So I'll see you on the next one. Take care.